Hello, everybody. Today, I'm going to explain one of the hardest questions that step one can ask you in one YouTube short. Drug A is most similar to which the following, and we have a graph where we have the vascular tone over here and the log dose of norepinephrine. And drug A is doing this weird thing where you have less vascular tone. The vascular tone is measured after we've given them norepinephrine. What is drug A similar to? Uh, the answer was phenoxybenzamine. Well, atropine, that acts on acetylcholine, not adrenergic system. Atropine works on the parasympathetic nervous system, not the adrenergic or the sympathetic. And remember, we're testing the norepinephrine effect. That's adrenergic, not muscarinic. And that is why, answer, atropine is wrong. Because remember that norepinephrine affects the alpha-1 and the beta-2 receptors. Alpha always constricts and beta relaxes. But norepinephrine especially causes vasoconstriction on alpha-1. What about labetalol? Well, that is a mixed alpha and beta blocker, but it's reversible. It would shift this curve to the right, not decreasing the Vmax, which is our difference between these Y values. Similarly, phentolamine can block the alpha-1 and the alpha-2, but does competitive inhibition, which increases the KM, not decreases the Vmax. Whereas phenoxybenzamine, that kills all the alpha-1 receptors permanently. And then propanolol is just a beta blocker. That would not affect the vasoconstriction which is what we're really measuring here with our vascular tone. Competitive versus non-competitive antagonists. So for the competitive antagonists, you should think of let me in, right? Because they're competing with the real ligand, like norepinephrine, for the exact same spot on the receptor. All right, so that exact same spot, they're doing competition. And this can be overcome with just higher dosage. It's the same spot, so you just got to compete harder with the higher dosage. And that causes the graph to shift to the right. It takes more agonism to get that same effect, but it can eventually reach that so the Vmax would stay the same. Phentolamine, as we discussed, which is a reversible alpha blocker. However, if you add the non in front, now it's non-competitive. That's like gluing the door shut. It binds permanently, or it binds to somewhere else on the receptor, which is called an allosteric interaction. And so it doesn't matter how much agonism you throw at this, the effect is just gonna be blunted, right? So that's non-competitive, which is irreversible antagonism. You bind permanently or allosterically, and so you cannot outcompete that. And so that graph would have a lower Vmax, but the KM would stay the same, which is what we saw in our graph right here. See how this Vmax changed? You permanently affected it. And phenoxybenzamine is an irreversible alpha-1 blocker, which would blunt the effects of that alpha-1 that we talked about because we gave them the norepinephrine, which acts on both of these receptors, but especially the alpha-1. So competitive, a way to think about this is you're blocking somebody from sitting on a bus seat, but they can shove you off and they can still sit there if they're strong enough. Non-competitive is like you bolt the bus seat down or you break the bus seat. Now nobody can sit there. Okay, so norepinephrine, as we discussed, is the agonist. It's trying to activate the alpha-1 receptor. And drug A is the irreversible inhibitor because even with more norepinephrine, it cannot get this absolute full response that we wanted all the way up here. So it's a decreased Vmax. And good job. That's one of the most difficult concepts that step one will test you on. If you like more of this stuff, then like and subscribe. The shirt of the day has been Harry Potter and Hagrid.